in the last session we were talking about uh, lighting on this particular scene and uh, we had looked at the global we had looked at um, the light angle the, the, the light source angle and we looked at the gamma um, and we, we kind of tweaked it in for the best balance that we could a good balance between shadows and highlights um, and where we could get the best detail that we could with this particular scene at this particular position. Now we also have ambient. Uh, so ambient light is the light that uh, kind of bounces all over the place. All right, if you have a light source, so the light source, yeah, like that. Okay, now that's kind of direct light. And then you're gonna have the diffuse light, and that's basically the light that is reflected off of objects or, all right, uh, the light could be absorbed by the object or reflected off. That's Now, ambient light is the light that's kind of floating all over the place. It's the light that is, uh, it's the after effect of, uh, say, the reflection or the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the light source that hasn't been completely absorbed. All right, it's kind of ambient light. It's just, it's light that's like in the environment, but it's not from, directly from the source of the light. The source of the light is our global light here. Ooh, that's the source. The ambient is what's just kind of floating around. Uh, now, you can do a lot of interesting stuff with the ambient light. Now let's watch this scene here. Now if I take the ambient light and I just dial that down here, it's very interesting because you have here the light from the source. This is source light. If you remember, uh, I, had, I had put my global light source over here on the left, and so that's shining in. And then what I did is I came up here and I dialed down or turned off the ambient light. So all this scene is showing right now is the light source. Now, if I take this ambient and I crank it all the way up, all right, what I'm doing is I'm amplifying all of the light that is in the scene, all right, that's not necessarily directly from the source, but light that's been scattered all over the place and it's just in the air, all right? That's an incorrect uh, analogy. Uh, what you're trying to do here is to use your ambient control to get a good distribution of light across your scene. Uh, this is a poor distribution of light across your scene. All right, because it's poor because, well, I mean, it, it's not necessarily poor. I mean, if that's what you want, I mean, I mean that could be a realistic scene too. All right, it's a, it's a scene where there is an intense light source uh, and there's no scattered light anywhere, but it's sort of unrealistic. Because light that is coming in on this, this angle here is naturally going to bounce off and reflect off of these various objects, creating ambient light. All right, so uh, you want to find a good distribution, a good balance between the ambient light uh, across, across your scene. Uh, your ambient light, you cannot just take in your scene and put some place. That's not how ambient light works. Ambient light is across the whole scene or across the whole camera view and across the entire field of view. All right. Now, uh, I'll talk about these two colors here in a few minutes here. Uh, now, also, you have ambient light depth. This is ambient tab. You have ambient ambience. You have depth. 
Now, the, you can do some pretty interesting things with the depth control. Now, I'm going to take them and crank all this, this up. Now, basically, it is, it is the, the degree or the extent or the strength that the ambient light will have on the shadows, the shadow portion of your scene. You notice down here, this shadow's in here, is a shadow in here. With the depth, I've actually forced the ambient light to uh, penetrate into where there would normally be shadows. Shadows are obviously created by the, by the, 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 the interference of an object to the, the light source. The shadow. Everybody understands what a shadow is. I think everybody does. A shadow is actually the absence of light or the interference of light from a source. All right, so if I tweak this depth all the way up to maximum, I force ambient light into the shadow areas. If I take my depth and I go all the way down, then I have less ambient light being forced into the shadows. All right, so ambient depth is basically how much light you want to get into the shadows. Now, it's, it's very interesting. There's a very, very powerful control here. All right, you may not be able to see it as clearly in this particular scene, but trust me, you'll get to a point where this depth here will be absolutely essential. Because, um, and, and, and these, are, these are principles of photography. All right, uh, you take uh, HDR photography, high dynamic range photography. I, I did a whole uh, course on that uh, years past. In HDR photography, you're, you're trying to, uh, in part, in part, you're trying to get the maximum amount of detail in the shadow area of your, your photograph. You're also trying to get the maximum detail in the highlight of your image. The highlights are high light areas and your shadows are the low light areas and what you want ideally well might be not always but most of the time you want an image where the viewer can actually see some detail down in the shadows it's not just all black all right so if i have my depth control all the way down here that is, the ambient light is not getting into the shadow area. All right. I tend, these shadow areas tend to go black and you've lost detail. If I crank it all the way up, all right, now I'm, I'm forcing ambient light down into the shadow area. All right. Well, I've, I've lost detail there too, but I've also blown out. The detail here in the area. So the depth control is what you want to do is you want to find a good balance between um, your your ambient your ambient light your overall lighting and how far the ambient light goes into the shadow areas. All right here, how far in it goes. You see it all the way down. I've lost detail in the shadow. All the way out now there's too much detail in the shadow because now i've lost the shadows you want a good compromise so in terms of the ambient level all right i'm looking for a good balance across the whole scene with the ambient depth i'm looking for a good balance of ambient light into in the shadow areas i want to have detail in the shadows i want the viewer 
to see what's going on in the shadows, but not have so little light that you can't see anything in the shadow area. It's all black and not too much light where it's just all, there's no shadow left. So it's this, these two controls is a matter of finding your balance in terms of the ambient light. Simulated ambient light. All right, so enough for this session. Uh, we'll pick this up again in the next session, in which I'll see you there.